Heiliger Bimbam. I believe that's German for holy cow. I say that because this is a bit of a big beast of a vehicle. It's a four-door sports car, pretty much. It's the uh, AMG, let's see here, AMG GT 63S. So it's made by a brand Para 64, uh, Paragon models, I guess. Uh, I have to assume this is a licensed product, but it doesn't say anything about that. Oh, it does right here. So yeah, it is licensed. So yeah, I would assume the quality should be all right. And that seems to be their logo. I forget what track that is. I think someone's told me Suzuka. I could be wrong. Okay, so a little research on, <coughs> on this one. The AMG 4 liter engine, it's inside this thing is a V8 and it's uh, cranking out 630 horsepower. And it's also an all wheel drive vehicle and that's what lets it uh, accelerate to 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds according to One Car Magazine. And it can reach 195 miles per hour and it can pull over 1G on the skid pad. So we're talking some real sports car performance here out of this four-door vehicle. It's rolling on 21-inch forged alloy wheels, although 20 inches are standards. So maybe these are 20s? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm just reading off the internet, guys. Uh, starts at 160000 and maxes out, I think, at $190,000, US dollars, that is. And what's also interesting about this thing is it has a drift mode where it disconnects the front axle and then it'll send that 664 pound-feet of torque just to the rear wheels so you can pretty much melt your rear tires and also you can crash because it turns off the stability control so you better be a pretty skilled driver to be trying to uh, fishtail something with 664 pound-feet of torque with no stability with no traction control or stability right Okay, so that's really all I learned about it. I think it looks pretty similar to those photographs. I'm a little distracted by that giant thing inside the interior. It looks like there's like paper dust or something, but the beauty of the screwed together base is I can clean that out. In fact, let's, let's, let's go in a different order this time around. I don't think I've ever seen, I can't recall if I've opened up a Power 64. Oh boy, man, that thing is tight. I don't want to crush the mirrors or break this wing off. All right, so it's really gripping the paint in there. But we're gonna get a good look at the interior on this one. I think Power 64s are just black interiors like Kyosha's though. You know, the brand isn't super expensive, so they have to cut their corners where they need to. And I think I'd rather see a nice exterior than an interior anyway, so I think they're making the right decisions. They have these super thick axles, they have uh, rubbery tires, but they're just slicks. And that's fine again for me because I don't really need to see tire treads on something so small. Unless it's like an off-road truck. Okay, so yeah, you got their molded details, standard fare it seems for a, a car like this. And then, uh, yeah, what the heck is that? Let me get a, a brush here. Oh, that's like, it wasn't paper. It actually had weight to it. It sounded like plastic resin. So weird. Um, I'm noticing there's nothing, there's no rivets for this glass. A lot of brands will have a rivet to hold the plastic. But here, I guess it's just the interior that's holding it up. I guess it works. Okay, so now we know what the inside looks like. There's these little holes here, that's what the interior mates to. There's some pins here on that interior, so that's interesting. And same in the back. Okay, well, now we know the construction methods of this particular Power 64. I imagine it's probably similar on all their other models as well. Okay, let's see. So decent detail here in the base. I imagine that's probably based off, you know, the real car since it's licensed. I have to imagine, it being a licensed product, that uh, Mercedes provides them with tons of photographs of the vehicle. If not, well, I don't know if they would give them the CAD file. Because then you could literally duplicate the car, you know. Uh, but maybe they also just lend them a car in the Power 64 used as a 3D scanner or something like that. 
Okay, well anyways, it's nice to see the text here explaining what the car is. Uh, made in China, who makes it, what scale. Ideally, it would also say what year it is, but uh, oh well, what can we do? This is a current model, by the way. It's actually available from Mercedes right now, so it's a fairly recent vehicle by Mercedes. Okay, so let's start with the front here. You got the silver printing of the star, the giant star, and the little uh, badge star, and they look pretty good. Um, headlamps look all right. You can see some extra detail behind the clear lens, so it looks like, you know, a modern headlight assembly. See all that stuff. Ribbed here. Uh, painted, or it sounds like it's plastic. Hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe it is a casting, but it, it kind of has that sound of plastic to me. A little black paint in there. I like to see that there's this silver here on the front of the grille on these vertical strakes. So that's accurate to the real car. Uh, let's see. Though, these wheels, these giant wheels. I guess that's all right. Hmm. I'm wondering... Yeah, there seems to be air passing between those wheels. You can see on the back one, the light there. So yeah, there's air passing. And I almost feel like there's a disc rotor back there as well. I think there's like a molded in disc rotor right here. But still a tiny gap, so it, it looks, I guess, pretty realistic. Okay, so this is a nice blue. Oh, and by the way, I forgot. Uh, Twice Diecast, his channel. You want to check my subscriptions. He he got this model long before me, and so it's always stuck in my mind. If I could get this at a good price, I would, and so I did. But uh, he he reviewed this a long time ago. He reviews a lot of other cool models, so check him out. Okay, uh, yeah, a little contaminant right there, so that's too bad. There's printing on the side. Let's see what it says. V8 by turbo. Oh, so it's a twin turbo charged. I guess that makes sense if it's making 630 horsepower. And then there's a little ooh, you know, a reflector right there in the mirror. So that's a good thing you see here. This might be the least expensive brand that actually puts in a reflective sticker. I mean, that's really good of Power 64. Even Tarmac Works Hobby has silver paint. They don't put in a, a reflector sticker. And Tarmac Works Hobbies cost two to three times as much as one of these. So that's, <coughs> excuse me, that's good value. All right, so there's silver paint and black paint here on the, the window for all the trim there, the chrome and the black trim. The door handles are protruding and they're recessed as well on the bottom, so that looks pretty realistic. Uh, all right, this body panel gap here seems a little wide there on the, the bumper, but the gaps on the doors seem really thin, right? This, these are nice, thin, modern panel gaps. This one looks a little wide for some reason. Not sure. Weird. Okay, uh, no additional paint there, unfortunately. There's some black in the real car, although I don't know if it's a real vent or not. And then we got some uh, red thick lenses, so that's pretty good. Uh, the pricing here, I mean the price here, so that's, again, a nice feature. A lot of other brands, like say Shuko, would probably have these painted. Okay, AMG looks good, the GT63S, the star, and it's nice to see something on the license plate. I think that's great. Some red paint in there. Mm, it's kind of overrunning a little bit. Wasn't the greatest application. And then the silver chrome paint here on the exhaust tips looks good. The middle is black and it's a little bit recessed in the, the middle as well. So pretty, pretty good attempt there. The wing, it's not super thick. It's not Hot Wheels bad. It's not bad. I can't complain about that. Okay. No defrost lines, but that's fine. I don't really care for them as anyways. You can't really see them on a real car, so... I don't know why a lot of brands insist on having thick defroster lines. Okay, so we already saw the interior. This side we have the uh, fuel filler door. And then, yeah, so you guys might wonder. This one doesn't really want to roll. It will. You can see the wheels move. But there's some sort of friction going on. I think the tire must be rubbing something. Yeah, it feels like the tire is rubbing something. The, loose, the back is a little more loose. Okay. 
Well, all in all, it's still a pretty good model. I mean, it's almost flawless. The only thing, there's a little contaminant right there in the door, but that's not gonna make me wanna die or anything, so I'm good with that. And everything else, if I recall, is pretty much perfect, so that's good. Good quality control on this one. Uh, I failed to mention there's some wiper blades there, raised and painted black. And then the sunroof is nice, even though it's an all black interior, it's nice to have a little extra light because now you can see like that center console through the side window pretty easily. I'm trying to see how distorted these gla this glass is. Yeah, it's pretty distorted. The pick is quite wavy on the other side, but again, for the uh, retail price of these things, it's, it's a pretty great model actually. So I'm really starting to like Pyro 64. Yeah. Thanks, Twice Sidecast. I think you've introduced me to this brand and also Biante as well. So, yeah, very good stuff. Okay, I guess we should try to take a look at another Mercedes. Uh, I have a Tarmac Works actually. It's the, let's see, Mercedes AMG GTR safety car from the Chinese Grand Prix of 2019. And I pulled this one out because you can kind of see the styling elements, how, you know, the taillights, and in particular the front end looks very similar. Yeah, let's go back here. Yeah, you can clearly see the Mercedes styling carrying across from this uh, two-door sports car to this four-door sports car. You can see the little, uh, these little bulges here in the, the hood as well. These strakes, they are carrying across it seems. Well, I guess they're a little, they're not quite bulges on this car. But yeah, this whole side treatment, you know, these giant intakes and this little lip here going up. You can see a little hint of that there. So, all right. I like the, you know, evolution of automotive styling. Okay, I guess that's uh, enough of a spin to, to compare to. I'll get this out of the way. Get this spin in front of its photograph. Ah, oh, boy. Sorry, my camera's so low. I'm always knocking it around. But uh, I need that low angle so you can see the car like a human being would see it. Okay, well, as I mentioned, I think power is pretty great. I'm going to continue to buy more of them as long as I like the castings. They do have some pretty cool looking SUVs. It's just that I'm not really a diehard SUV fan. I prefer classic SUVs, you know, the boxy styled ones. But the more modern ones, it's not really my bag. Okay, well, I appreciate you watching, and uh, hopefully I'll get another Power 64 in and review that later. All right, thanks.